Yo, what's up guys, welcome back. Today I'm actually filming inside my living room, just wanted to switch some things up. So in my last Instagram strategy video, I promised that I would share my Instagram Reels export settings with you guys, so that's exactly what we're gonna be doing today. I'm gonna be showing you exactly how I export my Instagram Reels inside Premiere Pro, and keep in mind, you can use these settings inside of Final Cut or DaVinci Resolve as well. I'll also be sharing my camera settings that I recommend for filming Instagram Reels, as well as one Instagram setting that you definitely need to change inside the app. But before we jump into it, I do wanna mention that I am actually working on an in-depth online course about creating cinematic reels as of right now. This video course is going to be super in-depth and take you guys behind the scenes through my entire editing workflow, how I shoot on a vertical setup, how I get Instagram music onto Premiere Pro, how I'm able to edit extremely fast up to 10 to 20 reels in one day, a behind the scenes look on how I get my cinematic shots, and overall just dive much more deeper into my strategy and how I was able to grow 30,000 followers in the past 30 days. In this course, I basically lay it all out there and I just take you guys under my wing and try to show you as much as I can. So yeah, if that's something that you're interested in, uh, make sure to subscribe and follow me on Instagram so when I do actually drop that course, you will be notified. I'm super excited about it. I'm putting a lot of work into it and I really do think you guys will find a lot of value out of it. It's jam-packed with a ton of knowledge, so yeah. Pretty excited for that. And it should be out maybe sometime in mid-June is what I'm expecting, so pretty cool. Anyways, without further ado, let's jump into it and make some high-quality Instagram Reels. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is actually change one certain setting inside your Instagram app, and I'll actually go ahead and change it with you. Go ahead and open up your Instagram app and go to your account. Go into your settings, and then go into accounts, and now go into data usage, and turn on high quality uploads. For whatever reason, this setting is actually turned off by default, so unless you manually change it yourself, more than likely, this setting is actually turned off on your Instagram account, so yeah, make sure to turn that on. It's pretty weird how this is kind of hidden, and <laughs> I actually found out about this like maybe like two months ago, and um, yeah, it's just sort of something that you don't really know, but really glad I found it out. Just make sure to turn that on, and you should actually get some slightly higher quality uploads. All right, so now that we have that covered, let's actually move on to the camera settings and what I actually recommend for filming Instagram Reels. And what I recommend is simply just by trying to film in the highest resolution that your camera can do. In my case, my highest resolution is 4K. Anything 4K or higher is definitely what I recommend. And this is especially useful if you have a lot of horizontal content that you later want to convert into vertical content for say, Instagram Reels or TikTok. Having that extra resolution is definitely going to help out a lot when you do punch in and zoom in. It's going to be able to retain a lot of the image quality and data. So highly recommend filming in 4K or higher. Personally, I'm always filming in 4K 10-bit 422 in S-Log3s, just so I can get the most dynamic range and color depth in all my shots. And this is like standard for all my work. This is like the main settings that I shoot everything with, my YouTube videos, my client work, my Instagram stuff. This is just one of the highest quality settings that you can use inside my camera, which is the Sony a7S III. And sometimes I will shoot with my Sony a7 IV. But don't worry if you don't have like the latest and greatest camera, just start off with whatever you have and just try to film in the highest resolution. Lighting, composition, and pacing is much more important than your camera settings or image quality. So just keep that in mind that you can still do a lot with whatever camera you have and Maybe I'll actually make a video about this in the future. But yeah, don't be discouraged if you don't have like a super nice camera. And also I do wanna mention that I am filming vertical. I feel like if the content is gonna live on Instagram only anyways, I might as well just film vertical. I will say it's pretty challenging like balancing between horizontal and vertical filming. I'm always trying to like decide like, oh, should I shoot horizontal or vertical? So yeah, that part is sort of weird. And not to mention just vertical filming is just a really weird experience, especially if you have been, you know, filming horizontal your entire life. Yeah, I'll definitely make a video about like vertical filming and my setup eventually. Let me know your thoughts about vertical filming, if you found it weird, if you hate it, or if you love it. Would definitely love to hear your thoughts. All right, so now we have the camera settings down. We got the Instagram setting down. Let's actually jump inside Premiere Pro and I'll quickly show you guys uh, how I actually export my reels. And it's pretty simple. I don't really think it's like super complex or anything, but all right, so go ahead and open up Premiere Pro and go into a new project. I'm just gonna title this Instagram example, boom. And here I normally just like to drag and drop like a clip onto the sequence in order to create a new sequence. So I'll just go ahead and just take a random clip, just drag and drop. There you go. And I've actually created a new sequence. Now we can start editing 
And uh, just to double check on your sequence settings, go into sequence on the top left corner and then go into sequence settings and notice your frame size should be 2160 by 3840 if you are working with the 4K clip. This is a nine by 16 crop. However, if you are working with 1080p, this would be actually 10, 1080 by 1920. And notice this would be nine by 16. So since I'm actually working with 4K, I'm gonna actually switch this back. All right, nine by 16, cool, cool. Now, one really important thing that I do wanna mention now, so you guys like don't like skip ahead and miss this like really crucial and important part, is that we will be actually exporting in 1080 by 1920. We always export in HD. And the reason for that is for whatever reason, uh, you can't get 4K vertical footage onto iPhones. Whenever you try to actually get it onto your phone, it just doesn't actually show. So I'm not sure if this is just like an iPhone thing or if Android or all the other phones do this as well, but basically you can't get 2160 by 3840 uh, footage onto your iPhone. If you guys can do it, I would definitely love to know if you can, but for the most part, iPhones cannot do that. So if you have actually tried to, you know, get reels onto your phone and it just won't show up or something, make sure that it's in 1080p. All right, so now that we have that out the way, our sequence timeline is good to go. And um, I'm actually gonna go ahead and drag and drop some clips onto here that I have from before. So you guys probably remember uh, this footage that I actually uh, used for one of my reels, a blue arrow reel. And uh, it's actually not color graded right now, so I'm actually gonna quickly just add uh, my LUTs in real quick. One of my favorite LUTs that I use for my S-Log3 LUT pack is Emerge. Not gonna lie, I use this one LUT for like 80% of all my footage, definitely one of my favorite LUTs. So there you go, uh, just a drastic huge change already. I love how fast I can color grade my footage with these LUTs. If you guys are interested in my S-Log3 LUTs, check them out, link below in the description. They really do speed up your editing workflow. Uh, LUTs are just something I highly recommend if you just wanna be fast and efficient and you get to support your favorite creator so that I can keep doing what I do. It's a win-win for both of us guys, so come on. All right, so I'm quickly just gonna copy and paste these LUTs over into these clips and there you go. So from here, I would obviously probably just find a song from Instagram and then put it in here. But since a lot of the Instagram songs are copyrighted, so I, I won't actually play anything here. So yeah, now that I'm done color grading it and editing it, I'm gonna go ahead and export it. So let's actually go Control M. All right, so the format that I always use is H.264 and then um, make sure to actually change your resolution to 1080p by 1920, 1080, and then this should actually convert into, there you go, all right. Very important step, do not forget that or else you won't be able to get your reels uh, onto your phone. And from here, make sure to check render at maximum depth and also make sure use maximum render quality is also checked. So now scrolling down into the bitrate settings and I always actually export in VBR one pass. I feel like it's more than enough and, and it's actually uh, much faster. I like VBR one pass and I normally like to put my target bitrate around 30. And uh, yeah, there you go. This is what I would actually export with. These are my export settings. So there you have it guys. That is my export settings for Instagram Reels. If you guys have any questions, any questions at all, feel free to drop a comment down below and I will try to get back to as many of you guys as I can. If you guys do not follow me on Instagram, make sure to check out my Instagram and check out all my Reels and let me know what you think. And if you found this video and my last Instagram strategy video helpful, then you will definitely love my online course that I have coming up sometime in mid June. It's jam packed with a ton of knowledge and I really do think you guys will find a lot of value out of it. Reels is by far one of the best, fastest, and easiest ways to grow on Instagram as of right now. That's why I think it's all the more important to be able to get ahead of the curve and learn how to create highly engaging video content. So make sure to just subscribe and follow me on Instagram so when I do actually drop that course, uh, you guys will be notified. And don't worry, for those of you who can't afford it or just don't really want it, I'll still be uploading lots of content to this channel, so make sure you stick along for the journey. Do not forget to drop a like in this video, it really does help out with the algorithm. Make sure to subscribe as well if you haven't already, and with that being said, thank you so much for watching, and I have lots of content on the way, so make sure you stay tuned. But with that being said, I will see you guys in the next one. Later.